Well, Chris Ockley, Missouri track fanatic and running junkie here on the phone with uh, Deanna Price, the Moscow Mills uh, native and Troy High School graduate and just finished her collegiate career at uh, Southern Illinois and uh, getting ready for the Olympic trials tomorrow in the hammer throw. But um, briefly, take me back last year after you win the NCAA hammer throw title and you set the meet record. You go on to USA's and take second at the USA meet and qualify for uh, world championships in Beijing, your second time to represent the U.S. And uh, tell me what, what that was like to be with uh, the world's best and competing in Beijing, China at the world championships. Well, uh, it's kind of crazy because uh, track and field is taken to a whole new level in other countries other than the United States. Um, so whenever I went to the world championships, so this whole arena was built. Like hundred, a thousand people were just sitting there watching us, and I was sitting there like, "Holy crap!" <laughs> I just didn't really expect it to be that many people observing, and uh, the energy was crazy. And me, I got to meet Allison Felix, uh, Usain Bolt. I got to meet uh, Justin Gatlin. I, I got to meet them all. Uh, Taylor Patterson, the Javelin Bar. I, I've met so many great individuals, and. Uh, every single one of them were so nice and so kind. And just meeting them was huge, and being able to compete next to them and realizing that I am up with one of the great, like up with the greats, it really kind of put new things to perspective of me, and that I can't do this as a professional career. Right, right. You, I think you finished fifteenth overall, and uh, what was the biggest thing that you that you got out of that experience that you learned that you know took took you through this whole this year that you, you know, took away from it? Well, what about the World Championships, you know, that was probably the first time I ever got nervous. That was because, you know, I was sitting next to the World Champion holder, uh, Anita from Poland, who's gone 81 meters. So sitting there, I got a little nervous, and I kind of got rattled, but it was, it was a great experience, and I would not say anything in the world. Uh, for setting up for this meet, you know, um, I have just been visualizing the same crowd, the same energy. So it can get me through the season. So when it comes up to me again, I'll be able to handle it in a better professional way. Right, right. Back to last June after NCAAs and you, as you headed into the USA meet after having such a strong season a year ago, did you expect to make the team and, and do so well and make the U.S. team at USA's last year? Uh, I was a dark horse. I knew I had a big number in me uh, to throw at the meet, but I was not thinking I was going to be anywhere close to making teams. And uh, with me actually making those teams, it gave me a lot of confidence and made me realize that, yes, I can do this. Now it's time to get more consistent, which I have done this year. And, you know, it's been great. Um, and then and then you, at some point in there, you, you find out that uh, – Coach Connie Price Smith and Coach John Smith are are headed to uh, to Ole Miss. Tell me what that what those emotions were like. Um, it was definitely a sad uh, ending to the story uh, because my well my story wasn't finished, but it was a new journey for me. Um, I was able to be coached by James Craig Lambert, which was such a great experience because he's more of a technician. He's actually able to make me very consistent in what I've been doing and uh, my numbers with him have been great um, luckily enough he said he was coached under Coach John Smith so my training was exactly basically the same right just right more technician and he's uh, you know it's just like a, another Coach John <laughs> right and so you got all indoor season off you didn't have didn't have indoor eligibility and then you just loaded up and destroyed the the event this spring as you um, put up four of the top ten throws ever in college in the hammer throw. You go, uh, let's see, 238, 5, 233, 9, 235, 7, 237, 9, 234, you know, and you, you're just, what, I think 11 inches off the collegiate record. Um, tell, tell me just how you felt throughout the season just putting up you know, week after week, putting up these huge throws. Um, like, what we always say is whenever you start getting consistent, it means that there's a big throw coming. And that's why I'm really excited about this weekend. Is 
that we're just ready to go and ready to do this. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so, putting up those big numbers, that's great. Having the American record, that's great. But, you know, there's still more room for improvement. Still more room to be the best that you can be. So as you went to NCAAs, the, uh, I assume the goal was to obviously win win again and, and also try to break that collegiate record and meet record again? Yes. Uh, when I was at the NCAA, I was going after the collegiate record. I had several fouls that were over around 73 meters, which would have got me the uh, collegiate record. But I was not able to land them within sector line. Uh, this time, we've, we've been really focusing on staying within the green, uh, the center lines, and really hitting up on the finish versus letting it come out to the side. Right. And it's, it's been going really well. It's been going absolutely fantastic, and I, I cannot be more excited for tomorrow. And I, I saw, I think, that uh, the SIU uh, tweeted out the picture of you. Uh, warming up with two hammers. I've never seen anybody do that before. Is that is that a regular routine for you? Uh, that is one thing I learned from Coach Lambert. Uh, whenever you're doing two ball winds, uh, it puts a heavier weight in your hand. So whenever you grab the, the one ball, it feels so much lighter than what it actually is. Right. So it's a little. It's like a little uh, cheating. Like a little training technique to make it feel lighter. Right. Uh, and it, it's great. It, it's great because, um, you know, once you're halfway through the meet, sometimes the ball starts feeling heavier and you start getting tired. So what you do is you grab the two balls and you do two ball winds, and then you're able to, your body kind of gets rejuvenated again. So when you grab the one ball, you're able to pick up speed and go after it. Right. Are you, uh, do, do quite a few athletes do that or is that uh, one thing that special that you don't see many others thing, doing? Well, I never did it until actually the he, um, Coach Lambert, uh, J.C. Lambert is the one that always done it and I always kind of looked at him like never really understood why he did it and then he, <laughs> he told me this weekend he goes, hey, grab this and try it out. Yeah, yeah. And doing that the ball felt so much lighter and I had a huge PR and so I plan on doing that before competition. Well, you you won the, your second NCAA title and broke your own meet record and uh, came up short of that collegiate record. But tell me, what's your what's your mindset going into into the Olympic trials, going into the competition tomorrow? Is well going uh, well going into this competition, my mindset is to first make the final. My first throw is going to be make it in the final, sixty eight, sixty nine, you know, whatever. It's going to take me to get it in. I'm going to throw it that distance. Uh, get it in to meet, then after that, I can go after every single mark after. Um, that's my plan. That's my goal. That's what we've worked on this whole season. Uh, first one's for coach, and the rest is for me. And um, I'm still going to be wearing the SIUT outfit uh, uniform because I am representing uh, the university still. And uh, hopefully, if I throw over 73 meters, if God willing, um, I will then be able to spray the uh, collegiate record right. all together. And have you had discussions with uh, with agents at all, or, or what's your what are your plans going forward? Are you going to stay in Car Car well, Carbondale and keep training, or what, what are your plans now? Well, going forward, uh, I plan on getting an agent after this week. Um, I haven't really talked to anyone because it is against NCAA rules and regulations to talk to any agents or Nike or any sponsorships. So after this meeting, I'll be a free agent. Um, I mean, a free athlete, uh, I guess, unattached. And then I'll uh, sign up with an agent and then hopefully get a good sponsorship. And I will be still training, though, at Southern Illinois with uh, Coach Lambert. Uh, he's done a great, fantastic job, and he's been really able to give me some of that help. And hopefully I'll be able to uh, really get my spot. Right. What are what are the one or two things when you're in the ring that you're focused on, or what what are the two one or two things that you have in your head that you focus on when you're in the ring? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. What when you're in the ring tomorrow? What are, is you? Do you have one or two things cues in your head that you're looking at that you're trying to focus on? Uh, before I get to throwing, my first plan is to. Just get in there, and I think that's what your question was. I couldn't hear you very well, but my first plan uh, getting into the ring is 
my little, uh, I guess, what I'm used to doing is first throw, I take a left handed throw, and then I'll do a two ball line, and then I'll take a right handed throw, and then the last throw, I'll take a nice 70% throw, get it out there for warm up, and then after that, the competition will begin. And it's really nice because uh, Gwen and Geneva and Jessica. And all my whole crew will be there, so it's nice. You know, it's like a little family. Uh, <laughs> just that's the that's the old SIU days. Right, right. It, when you're in the ring, is there one or two cues or one or two things that you're focused on to, with your feet or your hands or anything that's going through your mind that that's the only thing in your mind? I actually plan on 